the Edmonton Oilers get a massive win in Game 2 and look to do the same thing tonight here in Game 3 against the Vancouver Canucks. Chris Knobloch has spoken about what the plan will be for Leon Draisaitl here in this game with some nine changes regarding an Adam Henrique injury, as well as what is the plan for the defensive pairing of Darnells and Kurt Cody Ceci, how that's going to work out, how that needs to improve. So I'll be talking about all of that here in this video. Before we do, though, we know that 94% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you're looking for a spot to get all of your Edmonton Oilers news, you're in the right spot. Make sure to the sub button. Join us here as we cover everything regarding Edmonton Oilers news and keeping you guys up to date with everything that this team has to offer. And that percentage is getting lower and lower every time we look at it. So if we can keep this up, that would be unreal. The support's been amazing. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the first topic here, which is just a game two recap. We didn't have a video after that game, so I want to just kind of give a quick little breakdown of what we had seen in that game what we what we liked, what we didn't like, and everything regarding of that. But I'm going to pull up the box score. As you can see, the two highlights of this game, from what Rick Talkin has said, also what we know is Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. Those two guys really lit this game up with a goal and three assists each. Also, four shots for Leon Dreisaitl, five for Connor McDavid, and 28 minutes time on ice for Connor McDavid, 27 for Lee on dry side with Evan Bouchard getting 29. This game was exactly what the Edmonton Oilers needed to do. They needed this game to go their way. They needed those guys to step up the top dogs on this team. They absolutely did. And you can see as well here from this stat card, you can see those guys, Matias Ekholm, that first pairing of Matias Ekholm, Evan Bouchard, McDavid, dry Seidel, and Zach Hyman. Those are the three, or uh, sorry, the five guys that really showed that this team is going to win and really need to win and want to win. They're carrying this team when they need to and when they don't, but this game was absolutely a perfect example of this team, these guys showing that this team wants to get to the promised land, which is a Stanley Cup. But from this game, we've seen a lot. We noticed that this team wanted wanted to win. Leon Dreisel coming into this game, not knowing what his role will be really due to the injury and whatnot, but he found whatever they wanted to do with him. He was there for it. He was ready for it. And that showed here on this box score. But let's move on to tonight's game. I just want to do a quick recap for that, just to kind of give a, a little flashback, a little remember of it. But let's head on to the Oilers. They, they made a few line changes here with the absence of Adam Henry here in this game who is going to be missing, like I said, due to injury. But this is what Chris Knobloch had to say uh, from a Oilers Nation um, uh, post or, uh, you know, website post. What, I can't remember the word. I do apologize. But they always reloading the wagon in Game 3, much like they did in, uh, in the game prior, keeping Leon Dreisaitl on the top line against the Canucks, which is what we're seeing right now. Banged up in Game 1, Dreisaitl was questionable for Game 2, but ended up not just playing and ripping Vancouver apart all night, en route to a 4-3 win in overtime. But Oilers head coach Chris Novak said that while Dreisaitl expected to start on their top line, the superstar might also return to centering his own line. I'm certain there will be times he'll be playing left wing with Connor, there will be other times he's centering his old line, he said via the Oilers website, so we'll see what Vancouver does with their lineup, and we'll adjust from there. So, that really shows that, you know, Chris Knobloch, the Edmonton Oilers, are waiting to see what the Vancouver Canucks do to adjust to these guys. He knows that whatever they want to do with Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Zach Hyman, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, you know, the top guys on this team, they can do whatever they want with those guys, and it will work out. But Vancouver is a very good team at adapting, adjusting to find a way to find some success in a game such as this. So there's going to be a real telltale sign of what the Vancouver Canucks choose to do against these guys. And Chris Knobloch and the Oilers will adapt from there. So what we are seeing right now, I'll pull up the forward lines. I believe these are what we had to practice earlier uh, due to Adam Henrique not being in the in this uh, four sets of lines. So the Connor McDavid, Dry Saddle, and Hyman, that is the line that we know is just a very powerful unit wherever or whenever they choose to put these guys on the ice. But everybody else on there, you know, Matthias Janmark, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Evander Kane, Warren Fogel, Ryan McLeod, Corey Perry, Dylan Holly, Derek Ryan, Connor Brown. Those three lines also have been, you know, doing their job, getting things done. But we know that Leon Dreisaitl and McDavid and Hyman, that first unit, is really the, the thing that is keeping this team in check. That being said, that's also having a, a big impact on what we're seeing in the defense of that first line, as well as the second line of Darnell Nurse and Cody Ceci. That line's been having a bit of a, a struggle lately, which I will be talking about here in a, in a few minutes. But going back to the forwards, I think what Chris Knobloch is going to choose to do is whatever 
uh, like I said, the Vancouver Canucks choose to do, he's going to swap it and see if they can spread out that power most likely if they choose to fully commit to defending that first line, which likely what the Vancouver Canucks will do is attempt to do that. However, this team is just so good. We know this team is so good that they can really choose to do whatever they want as previously seen throughout this entire playoffs. But another article from uh, this um, Oilers Nation revealed or kind of hinted at what they could do if they wanted to spread uh, the wealth. And I don't have a screenshot of this one, unfortunately. I should have put it in, but uh, it was to move Dylan Holloway up and rotate some lines. You Moving um, Dylan Holloway up, and I believe it was Warren Fogel up as well, and moving Matias Janmark down. I can't remember, but along the lines of that, while rotating Leon Dreisaitl as well. So I'm very excited to see tonight what the Oilers choose to do with Leon Dreisaitl and what the Vancouver Canucks are going to do to attempt to defend this line or these guys individually, depending on whatever line they go on. And that really will be a good sign to see what is going to happen for the rest of the series, how the rest of the series will play out. As we know, both these teams are very good at adapting to each other, very good at learning against each other, as they are uh, division rivals. So I'm very excited to see what this turns out to be tonight, if this continues to stay hot, as those guys have. But we can only it's only a matter of time now until we see this, but I, I'm very excited to see. But let's move on, once again, to Nurse and Cece. One that I just mentioned a few minutes ago, I think we need to talk about a bit more here. And I mentioned this in the last video. These guys have struggled. You know, that's that's evident. This is what we've seen um, compared to the major difference between Ekholm and Bouchard. That line has been fantastic. Very, very good. And one of the best, if not the best, defensive line in the playoffs. But from what we have here, and uh, this is from The Athletic, I'm not going to, I will actually read all of this because it's pretty important to what, what we're going to be talking about here. It says, now the Oilers' second round against the Vancouver Canucks is not at a win apiece. Nurse and Stacey's struggles are showing up again. Even as the pair has taken off uh, on a more, far more sheltered role and reduced workload, the Oilers are down to scoreboard 4-1 to one at 5-on-5 five five with them skating. They controlled a dreadful 13.6% of expected goals in that scenario. Something must change. The Oilers' Cups hope will once again be in jeopardy. They're not playing as well as they can, Chris Knobloch said. Neither Blue Liner has cracked 19 minutes threshold in their um, in either of the first two games. That, despite them averaging just over 21 minutes in the first round against the LA Kings, which really shows that these guys have not been performing. These guys, you want to have on the ice as much as you can. Uh, normally, not in the scenario they are now, but especially with Bouchard and Ekholm, you can kind of afford to, although it might not be the ideal scenario. So, Whatever Chris Knobloch chooses to do, whether it's split them up from the defensive pairings, put Vincent DeHarnay, who I've said has been performing much better this season as the season's progressed as well, whether he chooses to do that, I really think something needs to be done if we don't see a change here in this game, especially if it's a loss. You know, that's one thing that is going to be a tough challenge to face going into game five game and uh, game four, depending on whatever we see here in this game. Now, if we see a turnaround here in this game, that solves the problems that the uh, the Edmonton Oilers have been having in these playoff series, but I don't know if that's going to be the case due to what we've seen from this line uh, in this series, as well as a bit in LA. So let me know what you think should be done with these um, these defensive pairings. Should they be split up? Should we maybe move them around? But what do you think? Let me know. Uh, a lot of stuff that we're going to have to see here in tonight's game to evaluate what changes are going to be made, but... That's all I got here in this video. If you did enjoy, make sure you give the video a like. Hit the sub button as well if you did enjoy and you want to stay up to date with all the Edmonton Oilers news. But like I said, that's all I got. I'm signing out. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.